what's going on guys today I want to talk a little bit about a problem and a solution this being the problem external hard drives and this being the solution so if you're tired of running out of space and your 4k videos are eating up all your hard drive space and you want to know what a nice solution for that is stick around and I'll show you So for those that actually enjoy watching unboxings, I'm gonna do this one just for you guys. So I, um, I've run into this problem for quite a while and I've been completely ignoring and avoiding taking this next step. But honestly, it's not the most expensive solution and it certainly is going to alleviate a lot of problems. Now this thing is supposed to be pretty blazing fast when it comes to read and write speeds and the biggest requirement is to be able to have something that is fault tolerant or have redundancy meaning if one hard drive crashes then I have another one to back it up and I think that's a big problem with these guys if you want to back up your data if you want to store all your photos your videos back up your computer you're relying on this and this can get lost it can break it runs out of uh, space pretty quickly because it's, it's a smaller size drive. What I have run into is a problem with data integrity. Data integrity meaning that the data eventually, it just wasn't accessible after I've accessed it so many times. So this guy, along with uh, three 12 terabyte hard drives, is gonna solve that problem. It's a huge box, but honestly, the device isn't really all that big. Oh, did I mention that it's 10 gigabit ethernet? That's pretty sweet. Power cable. And mind you, this is just a housing. Essentially, this is just a housing for all your drives, but it, it, it's, it's easy to swap out and it's super efficient. And that's why we like this, because it's simple. It doesn't require a whole lot of extra work or maintenance. And it's another computer, so it's not going to be nearly as vulnerable to operating system updates, patches, etc. However, it does allow you to run multiple computers on it at the same time. So yeah, this is it. This is the old, this is the old very, very dark, very not so heavy NAS. It's a four bay NAS, which means that it can store four different hard drives. And I happen to have three I happen to have three 12 terabyte drives to put into this guy. So, so the reason why I went with this brand is because not only does it have Thunderbolt technology built in, but it also has 10 gigabit ethernet. And I built my computer to have 10 gigabit ethernet. All that technically means to you is that it's much faster. The other reason why I bought the QNAP is because it can be expanded to 32 gigabytes of memory. The other reason why I like this is because you can add one terabyte or two, which is expensive, but I chose to go one terabyte NVMe SSD for real time, real fast caching. So if you're accessing a file, specifically like a video file or something, you can access it really quickly over your network because it is in here. It's stored. <sighs> we just need to explain this. Essentially what this thing will do is as you access files regularly, the operating system on the actual NAS will determine, hey, this file, he accesses it frequently. We don't want to keep pulling it from this slow spinning disk. We're going to store it in a solid state memory, which is incredibly fast. I mean, I think like 500 megabytes, 600, 700, 800 megabytes per second. What is the actual total speed on this thing? 
let's just say it's more than 500 megabytes per second, so it's it's super fast. And then you got the 10 gigabit Ethernet, so you know if you do the math, it's just really fast data access on the fly. You're not going to really be accessing more than one terabyte worth of data at one given time if you're editing photos or videos or files, or if you have virtual machines. Whatever you're doing, it can probably fit on one of these. And if it doesn't, you can get a two terabyte one storied more. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this thing up, check it out, log into it, do all those technical nerd things, and then I'll let you know what I think. Action. I was wanting to do that. <laughs> Anyways, I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you for your time watching my videos. I also want to say thanks so much for uh, subscribing recently. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. And I wanted to also say that this video is not sponsored. I'm doing this video on my own, but do appreciate each and every one of you guys' time watching my videos. Also wanted to say, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about my content, what videos you like the most, what kind of content you like. I'll probably continue to make whatever makes me feel happy and what I enjoy making. But if it benefits you and you like it, let me know what you think about it, because if you don't, I might never know. So we'll go ahead and get started and take this thing apart. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna try to do is go ahead and upgrade the RAM and then upgrade the storage. Took a brief, brief quick look at the uh, instruction manual, but nobody really reads those. Those are just kind of like, I don't know. Those are, well, <laughs> you never really want to read it until you figure out that you have to, or you should have. Right when you take everything apart and then it's in a million pieces and you're like, man, I really wish I would've read that thing. Yeah, so, like also knowing this is actually working. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to, um, to back up and store all of my data on this thing. I'm also really heavily into technology, so I actually enjoy uh, spinning up servers and Fun fact, I went to school for cybersecurity, so I know a little bit about computers. Just a little bit. Like the last thing that you want to do to a piece of hardware like this is strip the screws. I don't know why I'm finding having such a hard time finding the right screw size, but yeah, stripping this thing would be like a death sentence. I actually did that when I was building my computer and I still to this day have not taken that strip screw out. So that takes off the case, then these are the internals, I guess this is the power supply. This, oh, one thing you always probably want to do is make sure you're grounded. Touching the power supply typically does ground you before you start modifying, especially if it's like a cold environment, like like right now it's a, it's a pretty cold environment here in Afghanistan and I have socks and I'm walking on carpet and all it takes is one, one little piece of static and then the whole device is fried. This is also cool. This is the, uh, there's so much, so much, much more room there than there is in mine. It's not that much room at all. The little diagram. And then with like the little click, click, just in case you didn't know, it clicks. Right, I'm about halfway through taking all this stuff off of this thing. It is a nightmare. And honestly, I don't even think I could have done it unless I had a tool like this, which is like a little metal, uh, almost looks like a dental instrument, but it's just flat. And it's used to pry off the front cover case, this guy, which allowed me to take screws off the front to be able to pull out all the drives, um, which shouldn't honestly have been that hard. But uh, now that I have got all the drives out, you can see the RAM is in this little location right here. So on the inside, if you're looking at the front of it, it would be the back right side. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these little RAM sticks out add some new ones hopefully everything fits and there's no problems and these just look like standard um yeah standard uh like laptop memory sticks 
Yeah. I guess it comes with two gigabyte sticks, and I'm going to upgrade each one to an eight gigabyte stick. So it went from four gigs to 16 gigs of RAM. But seriously, this is the most pain-driven experience that I think I've ever been And whenever it comes to upgrading a computer, I am unnecessary. Okay, one. All right, cool. One, two. Got them in. And uh, just to show you. New RAM is in place now. Um, you just pop those little side pins off and then pull it out. And then whenever it comes to the NVMe, which looks like there's two spots. So if you're gonna do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you right now, I'm probably you wanna set aside at least like an hour to go through and um, set this thing up. This is the NVMe focusing on my face and yeah, our focus has gotten a lot better in the canon I'll say that yeah this is it so I will slide this thing in. I was so worried that it was, uh, it was actually gonna be too big and honestly I don't know that I needed to take everything apart that I did take apart but it, so and make sure we wait for that click All right, well, anyways, the end result is that it looks like that. Let's take the little ram in there. Now I have the fun, tedious task of screwing all this stuff back together, most of which was completely unnecessary. Like, this did not need to come off. And that is why you should read the instructions. All right, so I'm going to get everything back together, and I am only... I'm only one screw positive. Boom. And voila. The next uh, step is to install hard drives in these little mounts and then plug them in. So we will do that next. Right, so I'm not gonna lie, I purchased these hard drives on Amazon. And they come in a box that was sealed, which is nice. When you look at the packaging, I've never seen a hard drive packaged like that. Almost like the sleeve was repurposed. Hopefully, these drives haven't been used before. And hopefully they last a while because uh, from the looks of it, these drives are just replaced in the same package that they were opened, but maybe they used some kind of some kind of resealing technique. All right, so we got the uh, the hard drives installed. It is much heavier now. It's about 25 pounds instead of the 10. We will go ahead and fire this thing up and uh, see how it performs. All right, so we got this thing completely set up and I just wanted to show you a couple of quick tests. So first of all, I do have the uh, one gigabit uh, ethernet port plugged into my router uh, just for data and apps and things like that. But uh, using the Thunderbolt connection with this IP address, the 169 address, which is the same one I'm using in my browser, is uh, what I have mapped to my computer to do a transfer test, which is 169.254.100. So um, we'll go ahead and do a quick uh, transfer. This is from my local C disk, and we will transfer a file. Uh, we'll delete this file, and then we'll transfer it to the NAS and you can see those speeds around 380 megabytes per second so that pretty much enables you to edit 4k directly off the NAS uh, if you're editing on like your computer you can have the files and all the all the footage and everything stored on your NAS and then transfer it to your computer and I previously did some uh, tests here and got some disk read and write speeds of uh, 300, uh, 230 megabytes per second this is with the spinning disks that are in there the large uh, 10 or 12 they're actually 12 terabyte drives and then you have the uh, NVMe which read and writes over around uh, 1.5 gigabytes per second. So overall pretty cool stuff I'm very impressed and I think that uh, it was definitely a worthwhile investment And just one more quick little test for you guys so you guys 
hopefully satisfied with this information that I provided. I'm gonna now copy it back to my computer and you'll see how fast it is around 1.2 gigabytes per second. That's really that NVMe caching, which um, is currently maxed out. So I bet you if the NVMe caching uh, was not was not currently maxed out the way that it is, uh, with the cache acceleration, it's already currently allocated for files to read from. If it wasn't fully allocated, uh, then likely it would uh, transfer from my computer to the NAS at incredible rates around that 1.2 or uh, you know one gigabyte per second plus speed so cool stuff all right it's a different day i am wearing a different shirt my beard is longer i've been editing this video forever so if you found some value in it you liked it please give me a like uh subscribe if you want to see another one because i probably will make another video like this in the future if you have any questions put it in the comments below i'm going to try to link it in the description the NAS and, and where I got it from. I'm not going to get a referral or anything like that. So um, this is just my gift to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, come back and I'll see you in the next one.